close your eyes and focus on your breath. As the breath comes in, watch it coming in. As it goes out, watch it going out. You stay in place. Find the spot in the body where the feeling of the breathing is most prominent. Let your attention settle there and see if you can keep it there. Get your mind to do something, to stick with orders. Because we live in a world where there's very little that we can order around, that we can get the way we want it to be. And if your own mind is part of that world that you can't get under your control, then you're really bad, in bad shape. Because you look at the things around you. Sometimes they're yours, and sometimes they change into something else. Even your body doesn't always follow what you want it to do. It doesn't ask permission to get sick. It just gets sick when it wants to. It gets old, and eventually it's going to die. As we're working with the breath, we're trying to get some good use out of the body while we're still together. But the purpose of this is not so much the body. The purpose is the mind. We're going to get the mind under control. Because the thoughts of the mind are the things that determine what we're going to do, what we're going to say, and those things shape our lives, and they shape our future destinations, our future course. And they shape the present moment right now. So you want to get those thoughts under your control so that they're thinking things that are useful, things that are beneficial, both for yourself and the people around you, and so that you don't give in to urges and desires that are going to be harmful down the way. So as you're staying with the breath, each time the mind wanders off, bring it back. And don't just use force. Let the breath be comfortable. Let the breath be easeful, nourishing for the body. The more comfortable the breath, the more likely you want to stay with it. To explore how comfortable breathing can make a change in your sense of the body and can calm the mind, soothe the mind, strengthen the mind. And this way you get your mind more under control. And as it becomes a stronger mind, then it gets the power to do the things that you want it to do. Otherwise, it's like having a wild animal in your house. You never know when it's going to start tearing up the carpets or tearing up, tearing up the upholstery or making messes all over the place. You want to make sure that your mind is tamed, that it does what you want it to do. When you tell it to come, it comes. When you tell it to go, it goes. That's when you begin to have the sense that though there is part of this experience in the world that you really can have under your control. And it turns out having the mind under your control is what really matters. Things outside, they're going to go. You get use out of them. When good fortune comes, you try to make use of that good fortune in a way that's going to be for your own benefit, for the benefit of other people, true benefit. When status comes your way, okay, you know it's going to go someday, so you take advantage of it not to just gather things into yourself, but to use it for whatever power it's got. As a, as a tool for the good. That way, when these things go, there's no regret, because you've squeezed all the good out of them. And John Lee compares it to getting a fruit. You squeeze the juice out of the fruit, and it's for what remains, or you can let it go, because you've got the juice, you've got the nourishment right there. 